So just a little bit about me. My name is Connie Matthews, and I'm the founder and CEO of RunCon Educational Services and Training. I'm a huge advocate for careers in STEM and are involved in interviews and talking to schools and universities and grade school kids around careers in cybersecurity. I'm also very passionate about being a mentor and a coach. And then I also sit on several advisory boards um, for universities and colleges. And as you see here, I also are involved in quite a few organizations and founding member of several uh, women's groups encouraging women to go into cybersecurity. So we're going to start by some tips around managing your career. So things that I feel are really important, and as I meet with executive leadership in the cybersecurity information security field, some of the things that some of the things that are really important are tips for managing your career. Again, attitude, willing to challenge yourself, constant learning, asking, being assertive, and self-awareness. And it looks like my slides are not advancing, so please let me know if this next um, slide advances. So the next steps, really, when you're new to cybersecurity, are one of the things that is really important when, when you're looking at different programs. College is obviously one, and obviously you guys have a program around... Um, Sorry, I think my slides are not working, so let me see if I can figure out what's going on. One second. Okay, I'm hoping that that may work. I just restarted, so let me know if that, that's working. So as I was mentioning, if you're in a college program, they basically will talk about teaching you both theory and practical experience, and both of those are really important. You under, need to understand the theory behind why we do what we do in information security slash cybersecurity, but having the practical experience is also really important. So being able to take that theory into practice Many colleges and universities also do supplements around cybersecurity training courses and boot camps. And at the end of the presentation, um, I will be giving you guys um, quite a few links of online training that you can also supplement that are really good. And right now, a lot of them are actually offering it for free because of the COVID-19. So another thing, a lot of college students will also, by doing some of those boot camps and courses on the side, you can also look at being certified and getting certifications. The other thing I highly recommend is always self-study. It's really important to set up home labs, read blogs, follow industry experts. The more that you can take on your own, that shows a new employer the initiative that's really important for them to give you an opportunity to work in the field. Another thing is don't be afraid to break things. But again, you want to keep in mind that you want to make sure that you're breaking your own things, not other people's, so you don't get into trouble. And the other thing is really it's important is understanding and learning fundamentals. It's really important, just like anything else, you build on the fundamentals and then you learn through experience. And again, practical experience. And then I know that this is huge at OU. Basically, finding a mentor or a coach is also really important because they can help guide you in your career. And I won't spend a whole lot of time on the seasoned cybersecurity professionals, but you'll see a lot of the same same concepts in here. But what my point would be for you for you all would be that if you're going to go into information security, cybersecurity, it's really going to be a journey. It's not a destination. So you're always going to be constantly learning. And as you probably know, 
cybersecurity changes at a rapid pace. So it's always going out and questing and understanding what more can I learn to keep my skills up. So now we're going to talk about training certifications and what aligns with your goals and objectives to advance in your career. So I'll go through these really quick and then I'm going to go through each of these individually. So we kind of break cybersecurity, information security into multiple buckets. We have governance, risk and compliance, network security technical, application security development, security awareness training, just overall security training, leadership skill training, and soft skills. So governance. So here are some examples. These are all ISACA certifications. And most of these require a certain number of years of experience, but getting yourself familiar with the terminology is really good. And there are a lot more than just these, but these are just some examples. And the governance piece is normally going to be more about checking and balancing and really looking at what does the program look like overall? So having those skills are really important. Next is risk and compliance and examples again with trainings. So PMI, which is the Project Management Institute, they have a risk and compliance cert. A PCI also has one, which PCI is credit card data. And then you'll see the other ones as well. So these are again, just different certifications that you can look at to supplement what you're learning in school as well. Some examples of network security and training certifications, you'll see there's several here. So CompTIA, which many of you may be familiar with, like A plus and Network Plus, and they have a cloud and Security Plus, so they have quite a, a vast amount of courses. And then you have like Mile2 and SANS and different companies like that. Cisco has some. The CISSP really focuses on all the domains in cybersecurity, which is another one you wouldn't be able to obtain that certification right in the beginning of your career, but that's a really good book uh, to look at to understand all the different domains within cybersecurity. So application security, which this is probably the, the most um, highly in sought after individuals. There's not a lot of application security people. So generally people with app development, database backgrounds would be the perfect people to kind of go into application security and again, as you can see, there's different certifications um, amongst the vendors because now with the movement of cloud, you're going to see a lot of Microsoft with Azure, Amazon um, with web services, and then obviously Google. So all of those are strong components of companies moving to the cloud. And if you're more interested in application security, I actually sit on the local um, Central Ohio OWASP board, and really there's great information. It's all open source. It's all free. So feel free to check out OWASP.org. It's a great site um, if you're interested more in the application side. Security awareness in, in examples of what is kind of going on right now. Security awareness is a very, very important with all the remote workers and everyone working mostly from home at this point. So there, again, these are not all of them. No before has um, securing the human error, excuse me, Media Pro, SANS. Uh, there's all kinds of different courses uh, that can you can take. And this is a great way to get into cybersecurity too because you're helping build out awareness programs. And some of the bigger companies have some really cool uh, programs that they do put together. So again, these are kind of a repeat of some of the other slides, but these are just some general certifications that you see a lot. ISC squared, is going to be your CISSP. They also have a cloud security certifications. Um, SANS also has a ton of different security courses that you can take. CompTIA, which I mentioned before, Mile2 is going to be in uh, CH with a certified ethical hacker. They mm -hmm. tend to have more of the technical ha hacking courses. So as you advance in your career leadership skills, um, some of these will require some certifications, not necessarily all, but what you'll see here is there's a CISO one, um, there's the HCISSPP, that is actually geared towards healthcare, and then you also have the Global Information Assurance Certification. So again, you see there's different certifications that align with different skill sets that you would potentially look for. 
So these are probably what I feel are some of the most important things um, as you're going out to look for a job. You probably hear all the time that critical thinking and problem solving are two of the things that people are looking for. And when I look at cybersecurity, information security, I really consider that it's really reverse engineering. So understanding fundamentals is really important, but you also have to be able to reverse engineer and problem solve. And so those are really important and critical thinking, working within teams to figure out what the bad guys are doing and how you can secure your environments. Another thing is strong communication skills. So it's really important a lot of times when you're doing any type of testing, you'll have to also create a report and then that report has to be communicated to a variety of people. So understanding how do you communicate at the different levels. Writing is also really important. And when I say writing basically is having proper English as well as having fluid writing skills so that you can communicate what your findings are and what you're looking to do within your teams. Obviously teamwork, uh, no one person can secure any environment. So being able to be creative and working within teams is really important. The other thing I would say is taking initiative. And when I talked earlier a little bit about how it's really important to remember that security is really a journey, not a destination, you need to make sure that you're taking initiative on your own. And most companies will help pay for training, but if not, think about things you can do self-study. And there are a lot of free resources or low cost resources that you can utilize. The other thing that's really important is understanding your business. If you understand the business that you're in, then you also understand what are the most critical assets that you wanna protect and you will be aligned with the business and this is a really great skill that will help you also grow in your career because understanding the business allows you to make better decisions and more informed information to the business leaders within organizations for cybersecurity. So finding a mentor or a coach is really, really important. The power of networking, leverage your network to make introductions, challenge yourself to meet new people. And the big thing that people are most afraid of is someone saying no. It's okay, you have to ask, and I think you'll find most people are willing to mentor and coach. I can tell you in my career, I've probably mentored hundreds and hundreds of people, and it's so important. And the one thing that I always ask when I mentor someone is that when you're in a position where you can mentor someone else to pay forward and also to give back to people, um, remembering that someone gave you the opportunity to spend time with you to, co to coach you and help you. And also the other thing is I would say look for the movers and shakers in the industry. You can find those on Twitter and on LinkedIn, but like Brian Krebs is a huge one and there's like tons more. And at the end, I'll be giving you my LinkedIn as well as my Twitter feeds. And you can kind of look at the people that I follow and that may help get us started. And if you can certainly reach out and ask me if there's people that you should follow as well. On LinkedIn is certainly when you're looking for a new job, who do you know on LinkedIn and you really using the power of LinkedIn and I use LinkedIn every day of my life. Um, it's a great way for me to keep track of where people are going, where they are and what they're looking to do to move on. So making sure you really use LinkedIn as a really great resource is really important. And then when you think about Twitter, again, who do you follow looking at industry expertise? And I will tell you that all of them have opinions and it's not necessarily that they're always right or always wrong They're you know, but it's also really good to kind of understand those communications and those conversations because it can educate you more broadly of what people are talking about and what they're saying in the industry. So as I mentioned earlier, these are some additional resources uh, virtual online training. Most of these are very cost effective. I believe Corisa, Plural Site, Cyberary, um, and Nice, I think, and Moose are all very, very low cost, but some of them are actually for the month of April are actually allowing a certain amount of their libraries for free. So hopefully um, you can take advantage of that. Um, now that everyone's also obviously working remote and you're going through um, through your courses and things like that. And I believe you guys are almost finished for the year. Um, certainly I would take advantage of this training, especially if it's free or really low cost. And then here are some helpful links. Uh, these links are really gonna kind of talk about different perspectives on certifications and what employees are looking for. 
I will say that this list varies. So it, you know, don't take this word for word, but it'll kind of give you an idea of certifications and pathways of what organizations and companies are looking for as they start to open up opportunities and work with people. And then I would say it's really important to get involved. And I know that Columbus is not super far. Um, I actually, my niece actually attends and I've been up there a few times. It's about an hour and a half drive. So there are different organizations that I would highly recommend getting involved. So these are some that um, I'm involved in. And then these are kind of most of the security groups within central Ohio. So Empower We Are Women of InfoSec is a nonprofit that I started with seven other women. And what our goal is to offer scholarships to women that are interested in the field. So for any of you ladies in 2021, we'll be opening up scholarships. Um, they can be used towards college tuition, certifications, leadership skills. So certainly if you're interested, let me know and we can formalize that process. And then Ohio Cyber Women, this is a great one to get involved with. Is I'm also a founding member of that. We're working with 6th to 12th grade girls um, and really working on how we can encourage more women to go into the field. And we're always looking for young girls to work with the 6th to 12th grade girls um, to kind of get them more interested. And we do really fun things with Raspberry Pis and playing cyber games. And then Columbus just started the ICMCP, which is basically – um, encouraging minorities and women to get into our field. And I'm also on the board of directors for that. And then the rest of them are really just general organizations that you can get involved. And it's a great way to network and meet a lot of different people. So I kind of went through this fast, but I'm going to close my screen here in a few minutes um, and see if anybody has any questions. Um, but this is how you can find me again. I'm Connie Matthews, the founder and CEO of Rencon. Uh, here are my Twitter feeds and then my email and then my LinkedIn. And I encourage you to reach out. And if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. All right. Um, th thanks, Connie. Uh, what, what I'm going to do now is since I, uh, since. So does uh, anyone have any questions? So I will uh, pa I will pass questions on to Connie. And for some reason, I'm not sure if I can hear you. So if you wouldn't mind using the chat box, that would be great. And I can certainly answer any questions that people have. Right. So I'm going to type uh, questions over to Connie, and they'll uh, she'll see those in a moment. So the audience that's listening, have any of you taken any certification test at this point or any self-study or created a home lab? Okay, it looks like some questions are coming, so I'll just pause for a quick second and wait for those to come in and happy to answer those. All right. So uh, one, of the, one of the questions we had was, uh, uh, what is the what are the most what, uh, uh, what are the most popular uh, areas in cyber? <clears throat> and while I'm waiting for those, the other thing is, if you any of you would like to come to any of our monthly meetings, uh, we certainly would be happy to uh, allow you to attend. So again, you can reach out to me via email. Um, right now we're doing our ISSA meetings virtually. So we had a Zoom meeting yesterday and had around 72 people on the call. We're planning our May ones. So I would encourage you to grab those calls if, if that makes sense. So it looks like uh, what are the popular areas in cyber? So a lot of people tend to want to go into the pen testing, their deep technical, which those positions are definitely available and they're always hiring. 
in that area, but there's not as many people. So a lot of times what people are looking for are more of the, how do we defend and not so much, how are we attacking? So those roles, those roles are really, um, important and there's normally a lot of opportunities. Another one would be the general, uh, risk and compliance, most organizations are really starting to build out their security programs. And you have to understand what risks you have and then how do you look at those risks and build controls around those areas. So the good news in the cyber perspective, um, from different things I've read, in Ohio alone, there's 7,500 to 8,500 open jobs in the cyber space. Um, nationally, it's up to 4 million shortage. So what you're going to find is really be able to follow your passion and not don't necessarily make the decision based on what's the most popular. There's opportunities across the board. So I would hone on more into your skills uh, as far as what's important to you and what really makes you passionate about wanting to go into cyber. And let's see. The next question is, how does an international student overcome the need for security clearances? Uh, not, all, not all positions require security clearances. I would say majority of the ones that will require it are more if you're working on the federal government. Um, you will definitely have to have a background check. And with that, I mean, as long as you don't have any issues, I mean, when we look at the, the group of people working in cyber, they, we have, I have a lot of friends that are not actually from the United States. Um, so again, sometimes the clearances are a little more challenging because there are, there are some really strict requirements, but that's not to say that you couldn't get one. Um, but again, most organizations don't require a clearance. They just, re I'm sorry, they require a background check to make sure that your background's clean and things like that. All right. So the next question is where to start to build a home lab. So what I would say, if you have old computers laying around, that's a great way. But the nice thing is you can actually create virtual labs, which there's all kinds of open source things that you could potentially look at. Um, but a lot of times what people do is honestly, they use their families and friends, old computers, and they set things up. Um, and then I also think if, you know, you can always go on eBay, there's different uh, sites that you can buy equipment relatively inexpensive. Uh, but again, you can really do a lot of things virtually. Um, so you wouldn't have to spend a lot of money on hardware, but I think what's important about building a home lab is you can start to download free open source tools that you can start to familiarize yourself with. And there's lots of different things that you can download and look at um, and like I said, either zero cost or no cost. Again, you need to be really careful that you're not attacking anyone else's network, but you can kind of create your own environment. And if you, um, want to reach out to me, I can probably come up with a list of different tools that people can use. Um, OWASP has a ton on the application side. Um, and again, there's a lot of different tools that are out there. So again, reach out if you have any specific tools. Um, what should you ask of a mentor and whatnot? So when I think about mentors, a lot of times you're going to have multiple mentors in your career because some are going to be more on the soft skill side and some will be more on the technical and then some will be career development or a blend of each. So what you really want to find in a mentor is someone that you can communicate well with and you seem to have some synergies because if you have that, that's going to help the mentoring process. But when I sit down and mentor with mentor people, I really sit down and my first questions are, tell me what you want to do. Where, where do you see yourself now in five years? And you may not have all those answers and it's okay. But the, really the goal of the mentor is to help and guide you through the process to potentially help you find your first job and also your next career. And I will say that I have helped a lot of college students um, and a lot of people that didn't really follow the typical flow of getting into cyber. And we kind of put together a plan and, um, and we mapped out what they needed to do to get them to the next move. And one thing that's really important is your resume. So as you're looking at your resume, having that lab that you created your own, and you can say on your resume, you created your own lab and these are the tools that you're using shows that the person that potentially might be hiring you, you're taking a lot of initiative on your own. 
So hopefully that answered the question. The next one is, what are the challenges for entry-level applicants when applying for positions in cyber? So a couple of things I think can be beneficial. There's a lot of recruiting companies that can help get into positions because a lot of times it's not so much applying, but it's like, who do you know and how do you leverage your network? And so what I generally have found is if I have someone coming out of college that I see has a lot of initiative and a lot of drive and is really trying to continuously learn and get further ahead, those are the types of people that employers are looking to hire. And I will say a few years ago, it was really hard to get into cyber, but a lot of organizations are understanding that we have to give people an opportunity. So resume writing and really putting everything on your resume that can highlight some of the things that you one learned in college, the self study stuff. If you're doing certifications, if you're working on a certification, you can put that on your resume and then you, then what you need to do is put, you know, completion date expected. And then you can put like the year or the month in the year so that they know you're working on those things. So the big thing is when you're new in your career, you really need to focus on all the things that you are learning, uh, whether through your courses or through like the self studies I mentioned, because it's so important. Um, again, that statement that I said, it's really a journey, not a destination. So it's one of those careers when you're done with college, you're not going to stop learning because again, it changes so quickly. Let's see if there's any more questions. All right, perfect. So it looks like that's all the questions I had. It's been a pleasure presenting. Um, I hope this was useful for you and certainly um, if you want to reach out to me with any additional questions, I'm happy to help any way I can. And I wish all of you luck. And this should be an exciting time of your career and getting through college and starting into your careers and really starting and launching there. So thank you for your time. And I really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Connie. Much, much appreciated.